So today let's test more of USB chargers or adapters. And these were donated by a viewer, so let's test if they can supply what they claim and let's see what's inside and how they are built, what kind of quality they are and if they are safe or if they are going to give you an electric shock or set your house on fire. And these two have a US plug or maybe a Chinese plug, which is virtually the same but without the holes. Let's begin with this one. And this one says medical adapter, whatever that means, probably powering some medical devices. 100 to 240 volts AC, basically universal mains. And the output is 5 volts, 1 amp. I have to use a travel adapter because I have a different socket here. No explosion. Let's try to connect the USB tester to it. It seems to work. Now let's use my test load to try to load it because running it with no load doesn't really show much. Increasing the load, the voltage seems fine. One arm up, it actually goes further. It can actually supply what it claims. It can go a bit beyond one amp and still supplies the right voltage for a USB port. And now let's take a look inside of it. I'm not sure how am I supposed to open it but Let's just pry and let's see. Wasn't super hard to open. The board seems to be soldered straight on the pins of the plug. Can't be taken out of the box. That's an unusual construction. And it seems to have two fuses. An NTC thermistor. These two electrolytic smoothing capacitors on the primary side and an interference inductor in between. Some auxiliary capacitor, low voltage capacitor for the control chip probably. Some safety capacitors, two in a series it seems. The common mode interference suppression at the output. This actually seems nicely built. Two capacitors at the output. And some safety insulated wire on the transformer secondary. And to see the other side of the board I have to desolder it from the plug. Well, trying to desolder it I actually pulled the pins in and that's it. You can see the bridge rectifier, some snubber network, some startup resistor I guess, the switching chip, well maybe this is the snubber network, and this rectifies the auxiliary winding and goes into the small electrolytic capacitor to power the chip, some sensing resistors here, the secondary rectification, Seems like a synchronous rectifier, it has three pins, some snubber network, small components, a discharging resistor for the capacitors, and that's it. And it seems nicely built, and when you see these extended ends of the secondary brought farther from the windings to the pins, and with this insulation, which is not just the super thin lacquer but something much thicker, you know this is a safety transformer. And also there is a big, huge isolation gap between the primary and secondary side. And with the safety capacitors here, rated for class Y1, where basically each of them would be enough for the separation, but they still put two in a series for more safety, this really is quite nicely built. And these two pins are actually connected to one spot and it says D, so it's probably just a diode, not a synchronous rectifier, but probably enough for one arm up. And I don't even have to open the transformer because I can clearly see the safety insulation on the secondary. And they are also using these small inductors between the capacitors on the secondary side for interference suppression. I don't really see anything obviously wrong with this one. So the conclusion is... Nice! I just noticed one oddity here, the box shows this symbol of a center positive connector which is typically used for this style of connectors but in this case it's using a USB port. And they probably reused some marking from some other power supply. And now let's explore the other one, it's made by a ball, says again 5 volts 1 amp and most of the description of the box is in Chinese. So let's just open it and test it. This is a small cube. Let's plug it into this travel adapter, no explosion yet, plugging in this, the test load is set to no current, and let's see, and let's increase the current, goes up to slightly over one arm up, this seems good so far, 
And now let's open it, of course. And also let's look at the back of it. Again, the same specification here, and doesn't seem to just click in. I probably will use my saw. And now I can pry it, and that's it. It seems to be a two-board construction. Here the mainness goes in via this fusible resistor. It seems to have some plastic spacers between the boards. Here are the two capacitors for smoothing. Bridge rectifier here. I should of course use something more pointed than my huge fingers. Here is the bridge rectifier. And there is an interference suppression inductor between the capacitors, which seems nice. Here is the transformer with some insulated secondary. Probably has a safety insulation on it. Does this piece of plastic come off? Here is a nice spacer for insulation and mechanical support. And here is the other board with the USB port. On the secondary side, this Schottky diode, I guess. Some discharging resistor for the capacitor. This looks like some sort of a polymer capacitor. Typically more reliable than electrolytic ones. Some resistor and capacitor. Probably a snubber network for the diode. And the USB port seems to have the data pins just connected one with the other, indicating one amp current capability. And there is no optocoupler. The boards are interconnected just using the secondary terminals and nothing else. And here is the switching chip, some snubber network probably, and some auxiliary winding rectification diode, some voltage sensing resistors. So again, just like the other one, it's not using an optocoupler, it's sensing the voltage on the auxiliary winding. In this one there is no interference suppression capacitor between the sides, so this one might have a bit more common mode interference at the output, but at least it has this inductor between the capacitors. But it's just a single inductor, not a double inductor, so it suppresses just the differential mode interference, not the common mode one that goes back into mains. But having the entire primary side on one board and the entire secondary side on the other board, the electrical safety depends purely on the isolation in this transformer. Of course, given this plastic piece isolates the parts from touching like this. So let's take a look inside of the transformer. And of course we have to make an autopsy of at least one transformer in this video. The transformers out. And the freight core seems to have this connection to one of the pins to take the high frequency high voltage from it, which would radiate interference. Now let's try to disassemble the core. It seems to open now. There was a freight core with an air gap in the middle because it's a flyback switching power supply. And now let's remove the sticky tape from the outside of the wiring. And here seems to be the safety secondary wound using a safety wire with a safety insulation, I mean, of course. And also with this even more extra insulation for the end is because the ends of it are even more likely to come into contact with something that's on the primary side. And of course, autopsy of the safety insulated secondary, the wire has two layers of insulation and much thicker than the normal lacquer. There is the yellow one on the wire and then the clear one over it. And on top of it, there is a third layer of insulation on the ends of the winding. One clear, one black to mark the polarity. And now let's continue. Under the secondary, there is this layer of insulation, which doesn't have any gaps, but there is something sticking out here. What's this sticking out from it? Normally this, of course, would be a disaster, and this would come into contact with the secondary, but because the secondary has a safety insulation on it, not just the normal lacquer, this still should be acceptable. But I still don't understand why this is sticking out. Let's remove the sticky tape from here. One layer. Two layers. Almost three layers. And this thing with a low number of turns is probably the auxiliary winding. But they sort of wound it loosely, so 
a little bit was sticking out here what the hell actually this is not the auxiliary this is a shield some interference shield basically between the windings one end of it is completely loose it replaces a copper stripe and then another insulation tape one layer two layers and this is probably the primary 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 turns maybe this is the auxiliary actually too few turns for the primary and it's made of two wires in a parallel and then another layer of tape and then this has to be the primary this is more layers I already removed 30 turns 146, 7, 8, 9, 150 the primary is 0.12 millimeters and it's typically the same diameter as the auxiliary just for economical reasons or I should say the other way the auxiliary is the same diameter as the primary because it's not critical and the secondary is 0.38 millimeters I'm not sure about the interference suppression in this one there's no capacitor between the primary and secondary side like in the other one but there was the shield winding so it could be fine and the shielding winding was sticking through the tape but because the secondary has a safety insulation they can probably get away with it plus the extra layers on the end so the conclusion is nice so that's these two power supplies which definitely were better than I expected thanks for the donations and if you like my videos please consider subscribing using the thanks button or supporting me on patreon because this keeps the channel running and big thanks to all of you who already support me